Welcome to Lincoln Shorts. I'm Sean Roberts, Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network. I have with me uh, Chris Riley, uh, formerly uh, Head of Public Policy at Mozilla. Uh, Chris has written extensively on uh, interoperability, um, and specifically around the big tech industry and their ability to, uh, well, basically allow competition, <laughs> simply put. Um, so uh, welcome, Chris. Uh, so uh, as, as part of that discussion, ongoing discussion, there's, uh, and we've, we've talked formally about uh, how an agency like the FTC could um, uh, be uh, a little bit like uh, how the S SCC has been uh, used to um, be more hands-on and to uh, uh, work with the industry um, that they're attempting to regulate. So, um, but as a practical sense, I think we all recognize being in the tech industry and, and maybe being left coasters, uh, that uh, the business moves really fast and you really need to have collaboration. So to that point, um, uh, it seems like there needs to be some sort of um, foundation, possibly open source, um, ideally open source, that would work with an organization like the FTC to help manage what that baseline API functionality would be to enable that interoperability competition that we'd like to see, um, you know, basically allowing uh, or uh, allowing small businesses um, to sprout up and to compete with big tech. So that was a very long, long question, I guess. But uh, um, what are your thoughts on that? No, thanks for the setup, Sean. I mean, I think that this is a very, as as you know, because we've talked about this before. I think this foundation concept is a really interesting idea. Um, let me take a little step back and talk about sort of enforcement of legal principles in a context like this in general, because I think this is a really hard problem that we haven't collectively as a, a body of people thinking about policy and tech and technology design and how to try to create good outcomes for the internet. I don't think we spent enough time on it. The GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, was a um, real turning point in how we pass laws around the internet. I celebrate it because I think it had incredibly good normative value and, and really changed the global conversation around privacy in what is on balance a good way. At the same time, I think the enforcement model for the GDPR is, is well, a, a little bit broken. I don't think anyone's happy with it. I don't think privacy activists are happy. I don't think the DPAs, the data protection authorities are happy. They're certainly under resourced and stretched too thin. I don't think companies are happy because there's not enough certainty that comes out of this. So I think we need to really think about when we do move forward with something, and it's a when to me, not an if, but when we move forward with changes to competition policy that really require more from interoperability to be offered, how do we enforce that? How do we do that right? We don't want a government agency directly tasked with producing as output what should be in an API. Too hands-on, too slow, doesn't adapt very well. Um, and so how do we- skill set either. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, I'd love to staff up government agencies with enough technologists so that they have the skill set. But, but even then, politics gets in the way. There's just a, a lot of concerns that would make that a um, low probability of success approach, let's say. So what would it look like to set up a, a, an institution that can build trust over time, that can engage with and take the participation of platforms, both large and small, established companies, startups trying to figure out how to or break into the market, hear from and have all of them as part of the network um, and engage with government regulators at the same time. So particularly when you get to a space like messaging, how do you talk about what would need to be in a, a, a messaging baseline to enable greater interoperability than what we have in the messaging ecosystem today? How do you talk about and end encryption in that context and how you can facilitate more security and more interoperability and not hold back messaging from doing interesting things. How do you fund the research that says you need to have, if you do, I don't know, but how do you fund the research that says you have to have sufficient emoji interchange between these services? I mean, yes, it's funny, but it's also real. Yeah. Like we need to understand what makes users want to really use these services and how we can facilitate switching and the other good things that the hallmarks of a competitive market um, in a, a field like messaging. Well, I, I don't know. Right. I mean, it, it <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, ASCII it exists. Problem. Yeah. And, and it's, it's not, 
I, I think there's an open question whether the right answer is to expand ASCII and make that the baseline or start somewhere else build down. I, I don't I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. What I know sure. is is um, we see success from from Signal and Moxie has always sort of kept Signal a bit um, not interoperable in order to preserve its its uh, security and its its particular values. Right? We see success with Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp. We see some some chinks in the the ecosystem now though, right? With iOS and its least latest update opening up a little bit. Right. We're starting to see some nods and shifts towards interoperability, which means we're really going to need some trusted body to weigh in on what what we need in that space and, and what is enough. And and uh, we no such body exists today. Right. So it would. So we'd have to thread the needle of, um, as you rightly pointed out, um, uh, a a commercial commercial oriented organization that works directly with um, uh, not only new startups. So there'd be a lot of existing right. players like the Googles, the Facebooks, the, right. the signals. Um, right. Um, well, I'm mixing things up, but uh, so, but. Uh, well, it has to be bigger than just messaging, for example. I mean, but messaging sure. is, a, is a nice case study for this. So yeah, well, and, and, yeah. and governments, right? And, and, and so how do you, right how do you, else. yeah, how do you bring During the competition? The, Exactly. How do you bring the governmental um, strength needed to get everybody to honestly come to the table and really open up and think about that? And then how do you prevent that whole structure from becoming um, a, a, a self-regulatory in nature, which doesn't really work out very well, um, or becoming captured, or becoming bogged down by, by politics and other things? Like, we really need something that looks like a co-regulatory approach that we don't have today. So lots of, lots of questions. I don't it, have all the answers. <laughs> isn't the, uh, maybe a good way to summarize this is if I have a great idea, which I think I have lots of great ideas um, and I want to uh, trundle down to Palo Alto and I know the street and I know the restaurant and I want to run up, walk up to somebody that I know that that's involved in the VC and I say, Hey, I've got this great idea to be, uh, you know, to kick, Google AdWords off the internet and, and you know build the better version yeah. of AdWords and here yeah. it is and I could I could not only um, you know do my little pitch but also the person listening to me wouldn't say but there's no way that you're going to break into that market it's it's too that's right it's that's right they're too dominant um, yep. but instead if I could um, I could prepare my uh, dissertation for the VC. And to get a better ear, I could go and work with this organization that's working with the regulators I'm in some sense to ensure that there's uh, that uh, there's a, a fair baseline. And I could go and uh, figure out how to organize my AdWords competitive product in such a way where it would th there'd be some understanding of how it could actually interact with um, a lot of the ad exchanges that exist on the market today. So they would have a chance of, of living and, uh, and breathing and, and getting customers. Because right now, if I walked up to the guy or gal, and they'd say, yeah, but how are you going to get started? How are you going to break in? You know, you're yeah. going to build your own ad exchange network? If, you know, yeah. It's just, there's, it's, there's, it's not, there's not, not imaginable. Yeah, you can't you can't start by building every single thing that you need in order to compete toe to toe with the Google. It's not yeah. possible. So that point is the on ramp point. And let's not you know lose our lose our, our listeners here by getting too far ahead of ourselves. Like we're still yeah. sort of imagining that there's a world now where something like what the United Kingdom's Competition and Markets Authority in its final report over the summer proposed is is actually enacted into law. Right, or something like the Access Act from Senators Warner, Hawley, and Blumenthal is adopted, and, and there is, in fact, in law, an interoperability mandate requiring it. I think that that is, that is the, the piece that I'm most focused on in the next sort of 12 to 18 months, because I think that if you get that in the law, and if you get a government agency that's willing to use its muscle, whatever limitations or complications it may have in its authority to actually enforce that, then we see what happens. Then you get things like the Data Transfer Project, which is a voluntary effort being put together by the big companies all inspired by the general data protection regulation, the GDPR's mandate to provide data portability. Get the law, get government that will enforce it, get industry to the table, and then we figure out what we can build. But yes, I love the idea of this as a model for um, 
a, a partner for a startup that wants to understand how it can set up its services to make sure that its market entry is as smooth and seamless as possible. Um, I, I like the idea of achieving greater clarity there because, because the ability to create new companies and new technologies is at the heart of what makes the internet so cool and so valuable for not just economic purposes, but, but social purposes as well. Yeah. It's the ultimate new, new age, small business, you know, being able to start that's, something. That's what we all, a good idea. that's what we all want. Right. And, and you can do it up to a point, but, um, the, the 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 potential for for growth gets cut off really quickly because of the number of points of potential gatekeeper limitations that appear within this ecosystem and awesome. that's, that's what we really need facilitation and uh ultimately government support in order to, to unlock well i i am really looking forward to uh talking more to you about um how we're going to get this done obviously it's uh, really complicated a lot of it and that's uh, most of the reason why, I mean, obviously there's uh, commercial incentives, you know, the existing dominant players would love to hold this off as long as possible, but this is a really complicated, intricate uh, topic where uh, policy, law, and tech meet, and uh, it, uh, it's an exciting, uh, exciting topic to start finally be broaching, because I, I, I feel like, uh, I feel like it's way overdue. Um, I think generally that a lot of the business this, um, business people that have good ideas are feeling the same way. Fully agree. I'm glad to see it as well. I think it's going to be an interesting next next couple of years on this topic. Exciting. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time, Chris. This has been Lincoln Shorts. Uh -huh.